I've been cutting up okra. I made some for dinner. I'm covering this tray to put them in the freezer. Um, a lot of them I will pre-bread, which I showed you guys that the other day, but a lot of times I just dice up little discs of okra and put it on a sheet, freeze it individually, and then just put them in bags. And then I can use that for whatever. I can, you know, fry it after that by breading it, or I can put it in like gumbo. Um, okra is actually, it's actually pretty good in smoothies. You can't taste it, like, don't freak out. But uh, there's this diet plan that uh, some of my family members did years ago called Trim Healthy Mama, and they put okra in smoothies. And that's what I've been working on, but right now I'm almost out of light, so I'm about to go outside. So Sweet Maya's been building a big bookshelf over here. Look at that lovely garden. Looks pretty good. Sun's going down. Let's head out there. Oh, this little pan is out here in front of the garage. She sure is pretty, but this is not where she's supposed to be. I, this happens every year, it feels like. I love having my chickens right on the other side of my garden fence because I can throw scraps and stuff over to them or if we have like fruit that worms got into or whatever, we can throw things over. But they will not stop getting in the garden. Nighttime tea. I've been watching this tomato every day. Or in the bottom of it starting to split. I feel like I need to pick it so it doesn't rot. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's definitely time for this guy to come inside. That will fill up with bugs so fast. That's a big tomato. A little funky, but uh, that's a big one. Turn this over like this. Lay it down where the bugs can get into it. See, this is what ends up happening, is pecked on fruit. And this is very frustrating. Bring it to them. Oh, sorry, Goosey. Goodness gracious, guys. We're almost done with the duck house, and all these Cayugas, all the black ducks, are gonna go out here into the woods, and the geese are probably gonna go out there with them for the time being. Hey, little heifers. You pecking at my toes. Maya was feeling pretty frustrated today because their feathers are clipped and the fences are about as good as they're going to be this year. That's basically what it comes down to. He's saying next year he wants to fix the fence around the garden uh, because there are some areas where it's like saggy or stretched or whatever and he feels like they're going underneath it but I don't know, they just keep getting in the garden. It's kind of at this point of like, now it's like they've already taken out all of the tomatoes that they could that were low hanging. I mean, I've been harvesting a lot, but uh, now there's not as many low hanging fruit, so there's not that much for them to get into, but he's trying to stay on top of it because we had to throw out so many fruits the other day that they had ruined. And so he was, he's come down here to chase chickens out of the garden like a handful of times, more than he wanted to. One time is more than you want to, but whenever it gets into the point that you come and chase them out multiple times, you're like, okay, we need to find a solution. Got some really nice fruits here. I'm gonna carry this big tomato with me back to the back. So here's my next round of cutting sunflowers. These seeds came from uh, the Urban Farmer Seed Company and they're just starting to show heads. So these will be the next round of sunflowers for the table. And I've decided that I am gonna go ahead and sew this bed full of sunflowers that I'll be able to cut for my table. So many ripe tomatoes. I am not complaining. This is glorious to see. Do y'all remember how hard I hope to have a good year with peppers? Look at all these plants, completely loaded. I mean, like, fantastic pepper year. <laughs> and I am really like a monster. Like a what? Like, I'm really, really like, I'm gonna get like a pet and it's gonna be like Bugsy? Yeah, I know those ones are like really good dinosaurs. The guinea pig? Yeah, name it Bugsy. <laughs> Okay, so 
them down. <laughs> Good job, Ben. Yeah, Look what I just found. This is a sherbet watermelon. It's what it's called. I don't know. It's like a sherbet mix or something. Um, it was something Toby picked out and wanted to plant, so I'm excited to show this to him. It makes me really excited. Oh, it's a pretty good sized little melon. This garden in the back is a mess. Um, I just pulled this. It's finally like hard enough that I'm not piercing it. However, I do need to cure that a little longer by leaving it out. I may stick it in the high tunnel. I need to look and see what the best way to do it is. I let one of my pumpkins go too long. It's like squishy and soft and has a like rotten spot on it. This may have happened because the plant got sick with powdery mildew and died back and it just might not have had time to do what it needed to do, but it's pig food now. I also missed this beautiful melon. Very, very sad about this, um, but it was down in the weeds. And as you can see, it's kind of got yucky on one side. I've got a couple more there that are almost ripe, so I'm gonna keep a very close eye on them. But, I'll share the love with the piggies. Pigs help me justify so many of my mistakes on a farm. <laughs> so many of the things that I'm like, oh man, I miss that. Look how happy they are. Makes me not even feel bad about it. Got a couple of these melons that are close, but not completely ready yet. But this one's good. Smells really good, popped right off. Um, it's a little weird shaped, but I'm sure it'll be fun. We'll have watermelon and this is kind of like a cantaloupe. We'll have both of these for breakfast. Oh, here's another one. This one's ready. Golly, that's a big watermelon. All right, that's cool. I need to get my boots and get up in here, see if there are any more. I missed that other one because the weeds are just too tall. This is the story of my gardening life. I'm out here, here's another one. This is not what I need to be doing right now. Dinner is in the oven. But I get so distracted. I come out here, I'm like, I'm just gonna take one quick look and the next thing I know, I'm knee deep in the weed garden, pulling out all these fruits and I gotta go inside. I gotta stop. We gotta carry that stuff inside and there's always so many things to do. Does anybody else do that? Like, I know you do. I think every gardener does it where you are like, oh, I'm wearing my nice shoes and I just got home from the store and there are groceries in the car or I have somewhere I have to be in half an hour, but I'm just gonna pop over here and take a quick look. Never, never works out that way. Maya is making his rounds, taking some food to some different animals with a wagon. I'm gonna tell him to swing back and grab those melons and squash because I can't carry them all and I don't have anything to put them in. All right, I want to find how much this tomato weighs. Hmm, still not a two pounder. Close. One pound, 13.7 ounces. That is pretty close to two pounds. So I still have a big one I harvested the other day. So this is now officially the largest tomato of the year. Those were close. I don't know why growing huge tomatoes just tickles me but it does i don't know why they get so big i mean you need your plant to be well fed like it needs to be nourished well rich soil um i think pruning probably has something to do with them getting big like it's really common for me to get like 20 plus ounce tomatoes but i prune down to like one to two main liters and that i think has a lot to do with it so if your plant bushes out just a whole lot it's going to set a lot more fruit but they're going to be smaller so whenever you prune it down you may get less blossoms on the plant therefore less fruit on the plant but i think the volume does go up size wise so, I don't know. Um, I've had several this year that were about this size. So yeah, I'll take it. All right guys, it's the next day. Are y'all ready for what you're about to see come out of this oven? It's gonna be good. Oh, I should probably not try to pull this out one-handed. <laughs> I need to put the camera down. <laughs> so I thought I was gonna shoot a vlog or finish this vlog outside. 
but there's a storm rolling in. Look at that. So I just decided to cook a bunch of stuff today. Mm. Check out that bubbly goodness. So what we have here are cherry tomatoes, which were covered in olive oil. And there's garlic in there too. Of course, these have shrunk down a lot and a lot of this is not olive oil. It's the, the juice from these. This was packed in pretty well and it was just barely covered with olive oil. And there's garlic cloves. I did not put any herbs in here. Um, I'm kind of wishing I would have, but I was being lazy. And I was trying to do this with three small children underfoot and the herbs were in the garden. So I was just like, eh, this batch doesn't have to have them. But this is a cherry tomato confit. Confit, is that how you say it? Um, and essentially what I'm gonna do with this uh, is put it in a jar and you can toss these cherry tomatoes with pasta or put them maybe on like some pizzas or they would be really good in a quiche and then the oil can be used as a finishing sauce um this was a recipe that i was tagged in on instagram actually a couple of times yesterday whenever some big account posts tomato stuff you guys always tag me <laughs> and i thank you but i decided last night that this needed to happen in my life today and i actually googled it and added the garlic that wasn't in the original recipe and i was thinking it would be really cool to add some herbs to it so i'll probably do that again next time the harvest situation is getting kind of silly i've got some big cucumbers over there that are a little over overgrown. There, come on, man. And a bunch of okra and stuff. And still quite a lot of cherry tomatoes and quite a lot of big tomatoes as well. Oh, and whoever sent me this amazing Ohio stoneware crock, thank you. Um, sometimes whenever you purchase things off an Amazon wish list, it doesn't come with a note. Even I think if people send a note, especially if it comes from like a third party seller. So if it was you say it was me so I can thank you. Thank you for this. That is amazing. What should I, what should I ferment first? I want to ferment all the things. So it is the peak of the garden. Um, I showed you guys on the first half of this vlog the back garden which is just completely covered in weeds. I'm gonna try to get out there this evening with boots on and like get through there and see if there's anything else I need to pick. But it's just, this is the time of year where it's very easy for the garden to become overwhelming. I know some of you aren't there yet. Some of you live in cooler zones than, than me, but those of you who are in the wild stage of the garden, I shared this before. I will continue to share it through the year. Just don't give up on it. Um, even if it feels like you're just hanging on for dear life uh, as you ride the roller coaster of this part of the garden season, uh, just keep showing up. Like even if you're dealing with a lot of weeds, you know, you would be surprised how much a garden that is going wild can still produce. Obviously, we're pulling a lot of things in. It's kind of that stage where I feel like it's hard to keep up, but I'm still gonna just keep showing up and keep doing the best that I can. And oh my goodness, look at the amazing reward for that. This just beautiful food. One of the recipes that I was reading for like a similar type thing as this, said that you can actually freeze these tomatoes in oil and that they're good for a few months in the freezer, but that they're also good for a couple of weeks in the fridge. I have filled this jar up with the tomatoes and I'm gonna put the oil in a separate jar. And what I like to do when I have oil like this that's infused with uh, tomatoes and sometimes I'll do other things with it. What I like to do is let's say that I'm going to take some greens, like I've got some chard out there and cook those in just a tiny bit of oil in the pan and like shrink them down. Like this is, I'll put some of this on those, just kind of some sort of flavored oil, it'll add a lot. You could take this oil that's infused with these tomatoes and garlic and make a really good vinaigrette out of it. And then on top of that, you've got the tomatoes themselves 
which are really, really tasty. I've done something similar to this before, not this exact method, but what I've done in the past many times is dehydrated the tomatoes and then soaked them in oil, which is also really good. This is just a different way of doing it. Burst cherry tomatoes are also just really good. Like if you just have a cast iron pan, put a little bit of olive oil and some herbs in there, maybe saute some onions, and then just cook the cherry tomatoes until they get kind of shrivelly and hot. Um, that's another good way you can eat cherry tomatoes that way. I love sauteed cherry tomatoes. So what better time than when you are completely overwhelmed with harvest than to plan another garden. <laughs> We sat here and went through a bunch of seeds and discussed what we wanted to plant where. Actually, our little <laughs> garden plan doodle, check that out. That's my garden. <laughs> so we had our drawing of the garden and I went through all of the seeds and I got basically separated what can be direct sown now but will die for the frost and what needs to be started to be moved out to live after the frost. And so with the visual of the garden, we kind of like nailed down, okay, like if we put this here, all this is gonna die after the frost and this bed's gonna be empty. So then we can plant like the garlic and onions there and you know, keep in mind the tomatoes will be out probably by the end of September and we can put root vegetables where they are. And I think our plan is to try to really utilize the entirety of our garden space. My garden is usually never 100% in use just because I leave spaces open and kind of cycle stuff through. But I think that for this fall, we're gonna try and see if we can really use like all of it all at the same time. Colin, come here, go lay down. So we put the living room back together and I think out of our whole family, the one who's most excited about it is Khan because he now has his couch back to lay on. So all of our planning today, the first little bit of planting started today of that second wave of summer stuff, like the next wave, you know, bush beans and some more squash and cucumbers. We're, we got those in the ground today for those of you who are planting along with me. I usually really aim towards like the second to third week of July to get that stuff planted. And then I'm aiming to have all of the cool weather stuff started by the end of July. You can probably push it back in some warmer places to the middle of August, but since this year it's such a late freeze and it was still freezing like three weeks after the estimated frost date in our area, I kind of wanted to air on the earlier side rather than the later side in case the freeze comes back earlier in the fall. So we're gonna go ahead and get all of our cool weather stuff started here um, by the end of this month. And that's gonna happen inside. We started kind of getting that space together today. It's such a weird balance to be thinking about the cold weather garden in the peak of the heat and the harvest of the summer garden. But it is a window and if you don't think about it, when it feels uncomfortable to think about it, then you'll miss the window. So I do have a video about fall gardens. I'll put it down uh, below so you guys can check that out. I've mentioned it multiple times, but it's just a good resource where I put a lot of the dates and all that stuff into it. I am excited to share the journey with you guys. I love getting to share this with you. Thank you for hanging out with me today and last night. I bless you until next time.